opportunity to join. Hey, Senator, when you're in Cleveland next time, you and I are going to Misfit Tacos, okay? Sounds perfect, Steve. I think we should do it. We're live on the air. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I hope you are, too. Senator, I, I, I am. Thank you so much. I know you're extremely busy, but uh, this is a very timely interview. We are joined by Senator Bill Haggerty, who is on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, I'm going to go right to you now, the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about this, sir? Uh, I've been on the phone again all morning uh, re regarding the situation on the ground there. It's incredibly disturbing. Um, the military side of the uh, base there in Kabul, uh, we still have control, but the Taliban control the civilian side. So the same airstrip, if you can imagine this, Steve, with the Taliban controlling one side of it and, and um, you know, international forces controlling the other. Uh, this is something that uh, should, should never have unfolded this way. And we have still many, many people that we have to evacuate from the region. The numbers I've heard on a top-line basis, 60 to 80,000 people. Um, this is going to be you know, quite a difficult operation to execute now that it's, that it's failed, as they say. An ounce of prevention, prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if we had a plan in place before just pulling the plug, uh, this may have, may have worked a completely different, you know, gone down a completely different path. But instead of a plan, I think what the Biden administration were focused on is a press release so they could celebrate the fact that they had, you know, removed American soldiers on the anniversary of 9-11. Uh, that was the big talk. That was the focus, the press release, not on the actual plan to execute it in a proper manner. We're joined by uh, Senator Bill Haggerty. Of course, he sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, Senator, uh, uh, the president addressed the nation uh, late yesterday afternoon. Your thoughts on, on uh, what President Biden had to say? Uh, I was very disappointed, Steve. What President Biden did was deflect. He s tried to spin it, blamed it on everyone but himself. Um, he made comments like the buck stops here, but then he spent you know, his, his, his whole conference really trying to push blame elsewhere. I mean, I was, uh, in my previous job, I served as U.S. ambassador to Japan. Um, I was the chief of the U.S. mission there. Over 250,000 Americans there in Japan. Um, I, you have responsibility for those lives. Uh, when you're executing what's happening in, in Afghanistan right now, that's called a non-combatant evacuation operation, a NEO for short. Uh, there should have been a plan in place, uh, an executable plan. Uh, I worked on this with my team um, and, and worked through it on a regular and consistent basis. Uh, they don't seem to have a plan. What they have is a collapse on their hands. And again, focusing on press releases rather than the substance of, of proper execution yields a result like this. And it's not only Americans. Um, we've got German nationals there. We've got British nationals there. So we've got, we have our allies on the ground. We also have Afghans who worked with us, whether they were translators, whether they're people that worked in the embassy, uh, many people on the ground there whose lives are now in, in great jeopardy because the Taliban are going to execute revenge uh, murders, uh, revenge, revenge torture. This is going to be um, a horrible humanitarian disaster of epic proportions. I know uh, we're joined by uh, Senator Bill Haggerty. I, I know that uh, your colleagues uh, in the House, uh, especially uh, Minority Leader uh, Kevin McCarthy, said they will investigate uh, this. Uh, do you think the Senate and maybe even your committee uh, will do the same thing? Listen, this is, this is something where the administration absolutely has to be held to account. Um, th this is a disaster by any measure. Uh, right now, though, my focus is on getting American lives secured, American interests uh, secured, and getting our people out of there. Again, this, this collapse is precipitated by bad decision-making on part of a president who has created disaster after disaster after disaster. I mean, if you think about it, Steve, from the moment he came in, collapsing our southern border, um, destroying our energy independence by killing the Keystone XL pipeline, turning around and doing a deal with Vladimir Putin, extending the START treaty for nuclear negotiations with getting nothing for it, and then giving them Nord Stream 2 recently. Uh, if you think about the situation with Iran and the negotiations that are happening in a back room somewhere in Vienna right now, uh, I cannot believe that American interests are being served properly there. It goes on and on and on. And China is watching all of this. If you think about the uh, perspective of what's happening in Afghanistan, what that uh, shows to our adversaries as well as our allies, it's a very bad message. Senator Bill Haggerty joins us. A whole uh, other note here. I know that uh, reading uh, the national press, you visited with former President 
uh, Donald Trump, I believe, uh, this past Friday in uh, New Jersey. How, how was that visit, uh, Senator? What did he say? Steve, I, I spent Friday with, with uh, our 45th president. He was uh, in a great mood. Uh, you know, very, very high energy, very concerned about what's happening in Afghanistan as well. We can imagine we spent a lot of our conversation talking about that. And uh, the, the situation is something that uh, he felt and, and I feel uh, w was completely avoidable. Again, it's a lack of planning that's, uh, that, that is at, at stake here and just a lack of competence um, overall that is, is creating problem after problem. The president is very focused on 2022, as am I. I think that um, this is going to raise America's attention to the consequences of the last election and the fact that we've got to retake the House, retake the Senate, and in 2024, retake the White House. And his focus very much is, is, is oriented toward the 2022 elections and making certain that um, we bring this one-party control in Washington to a stop. Um, if you think about it, it's uh, the focus on all the wrong things, trying to push through the Green New Deal, uh, socialist spending programs, uh, changing our election laws, packing the Supreme Court. This is what the Democrats are focused on. They're really focused on trying to lock in their own power rather than dealing with these tremendous problems that have been precipitated internationally, as we discussed, and also the fact that domestically uh, our economy is uh, not where it should be. Inflation is raging. Uh, we've got a pandemic that we've got to address, and the Democrats much rather focus on things like federalizing the elections. Uh, Senator Bill Haggerty, final question. Uh, in your opinion, do you think former President Trump is going to run for president again in 2024? Did he talk about that? You know, um, we, we, we've talked about it uh, on, on numerous occasions. I know that he's thinking that through, but right now I'd say his focus is, is much more on 2022. And I think there... He's looking for a way to play a constructive role to help uh, Republicans take back the majority in both the House and Senate, and that was the predominant uh, discussion that I had with him uh, about the topic. 2024 is something I think he'll turn his attention to after the 2022 election cycle is finished. Senator Bill Haggerty, of course, a very timely interview, him uh, sitting on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Haggerty, thank you so much for your time on a very busy morning. Thank you, Steve. Good to be with you. Thank you, sir. You as well. Senator Bill Haggerty, uh, everybody, talking about the uh, the situation uh, in Afghanistan. And as you heard uh, right there uh, live on our air.